Well, we'd like to make it easy for you to introduce your students to air traffic control. So the first thing that we did was to create a little workbook, an introduction to air traffic control. And as we looked it over, we thought, you know, this is useful, but Line Up With Math is so interactive and engaging with the simulator, we didn't want to use a workbook to introduce students to it. We wanted to do something more exciting. So what we did was we made a video. We went to the Oakland Air Traffic Control Center. We found a controller there who would narrate the video for us. And that's what we'd like to show you now. So let's roll that video. Welcome to Line Up With Math, where you get the chance to act as an air traffic controller. What does a controller do? Well, let's meet one and find out. Hi, my name is Lee, and I'm an air traffic controller here at Oakland Center in California. Did you know that every time you fly in a plane, we're giving your pilots instructions on where to fly and how fast? Let's think about how flying an airplane is different from driving a car. In a car, we measure distance in miles. And we measure speed in miles per hour. On the sea and in the air, we measure distance in nautical miles. A nautical mile is a little longer than a land mile. We measure speed in nautical miles per hour called knots. One knot is one nautical mile per hour. The U.S. mainland is divided into 48 states. The airspace above the U.S. is divided into sectors. Each sector has two air traffic controllers who are responsible for the safe and efficient flight of all planes in that sector. Now let's look at air traffic control sector 33 in Nevada and Northern California. In sector 33, planes fly through Modesto on their way to San Francisco. A sector is made up of many flight routes. Routes are invisible pathways in the sky. These routes intersect at Modesto. The distance along each route is marked every five nautical miles, starting at Modesto. We also place a tick mark every one nautical mile. To represent a plane on a route, air traffic controllers use a diamond. The plane has a label with its call sign. Here, it's AAL-12, which means American Airlines Flight 12. The label also displays the plane's speed. Here, it's 600 knots. Let's take a look at more routes in Sector 33. On this route, planes pass through intersections at Tonopah and Coaldale on their way to Modesto. On another route, planes pass through Mina. Controllers can also direct a plane from Mina to Coaldale. Here are all the routes in Sector 33. Each plane has a flight plan that includes its route of travel from intersection to intersection. It also includes the plane's speed and altitude. Here's a flight route for Delta 88. The pilot will fly directly from LIDAT to Modesto. But weather can affect a flight plan. Notice the black cloud. We use it to show a thunderstorm between LIDAT and Modesto. To avoid this storm, we give the Delta 88 pilot a longer, safer route that takes the plane through Coaldale. The main job of an air traffic controller is to move planes safely and efficiently. To be safe, 
you must keep the planes at least two nautical miles apart so that collisions and near misses never happen. To show this separation, we place a circle around each diamond. The circle radius is one nautical mile. Two nautical miles is called the minimum separation. Watch out, the circles must never overlap. At Modesto, the controller will merge the planes onto a single route and hand them off to controllers in the next sector, Sector 34. Other planes will join the ones from Modesto on their way to San Francisco, so the planes will need greater spacing. At Modesto, we need three nautical miles between planes. We call this distance, three nautical miles, ideal spacing. Now my goal, and yours too, is to line up the planes over Modesto with ideal spacing and get them there in the shortest amount of time. Now it's your turn to make some air traffic control decisions. Can you handle Sector 33?